Hi, this is Andrew Angel with Angel Eye. Just want to do a quick overview of using this PHP library for PayPal that I built. Makes it pretty quick and easy to integrate PayPal's web services into pretty much any PHP project you might be working on. Uh, pretty much all there is to it, uh, the way this library is set up, I'm just going to do a, a real quick deal here. When you first download, you open up this config file, it's under includes config and you just need to fill in your API credentials mainly. There's a variable for sandbox which you can just set to true or false. I'm actually setting it based on the server that it's running from and then you'll also want to set your domain in my case sandbox.angelai.com for testing or www.angelai.com for live server and that'll come in handy with throughout the library for express checkout or anytime you're using return URLs. Mainly you'll just need to fill in your version number, application ID, developer account email, and your API credentials. So these are based on the sandbox. So these are some shorthand syntax here. So the sandbox value for API username is here. The live one would go here where it's currently empty. Same for password and signature. And there's a spot here for the live versions as well. So you just need to fill out your config file and then you're ready to go. So let's take a look at how this would work. There's a bunch of files here but these are all pretty much just template files to get started with. So any call you want to make to the PayPal API you just find the template file and that's what you'll start with. So for example if we want to process a credit card using Payments Pro I use Do Direct Payment for that. So let's go ahead and open up Do Direct Payment and we'll see that the library itself is already included, the PayPal object is set up and ready to go for us and we just have a bunch of request parameters and arrays that we need to fill in. Out to the right here are some commented notes that are pulled directly from PayPal's documentation on what each of these request parameters needs to contain. A lot of them are pretty straightforward just based on the name but if you do have any questions the notes are there for you. So all we would do is go through and fill in all of these request parameters. It includes order items, so here you see a note where I just mentioned that you'd more than likely be looping through a shopping cart of some sort to generate all of your order items. And then everything in the bottom here gets passed into a single PayPal request data array. All the arrays above get loaded in there, nested accordingly and that whole thing then gets loaded into the do direct payment method of the library and the library result comes back in PayPal result here finally at the end we're simply dumping PayPal result out to the screen so we can see exactly what comes back so again if we would just fill out all these parameters that would run there's actually a samples folder included with the download of the library that has a few of these calls already filled out including do direct payment so if we open this one, we'll see it's got a payment action of sale, which means we want to process it right away. It's using the IP address, filling in fraud management filters, credit card information. We got some blank still. Anything that you don't need or don't want to use, you just leave it blank. You don't have to worry about removing it. The library will leave it out if you leave it blank. So tester, testerson for the name here. We got a billing address, billing details for order information order items in this case I'm just passing in a single order item to my order items array wrapping it all up in request data passing it into the library method and dumping out the result so in my web browser here I'm just currently I got a local web server set up and I'm just looking at the directory contents here so first let's take a look here at one that, for example, do void. If I just click on do void here, this is an empty one. So what I get back is exactly what I was expect, and I want to show you what it looks like when you get an error. In this case, the PayPal response, and in all cases, you'll get all of the actual response fields that come back from PayPal in their own in the array with with easy access. You'll always get an errors array back too. In this case, we actually got error information because this call failed my request was empty so it's telling me hey you have got a required parameter missing the request data itself that you send is also going to be included here 
and the raw request and raw response exactly as it was sent to and from PayPal will be here as well. So it's provided in easy to access and easy to read ways and then it's also provided as raw information here as well. So now that we took a quick look at that, let's go back and I'll go into my samples directory that we were looking at and here are the few that are already filled out. So for example, we'll go ahead and run that do direct payment that we were just looking at that had data. And here you'll see we got response data back. This time we got a successful response and so we got a transaction ID, AVS response, CCV2 information. The errors array comes back again but in this case it's empty because there were no errors. Request data again is broken down in a nice easy to read format so we can see it see it easily read it if we need access to any of the individual parameters we can get to them and then the raw requests and the raw responses here as well you might want to save that to your log or do whatever you want to do with it but everything that you might need is available in this result that comes back from the library so again if we go back we might want to look at get balance for example get balance hits PayPal right away comes back successful and in this case you'll see that the amount comes back and there could be more than one amount and currency returned which is why you have this zero on the end and then there could be one two three four or however many you had so the library it'll return them all individually like that but it also goes ahead and parses all that out for you and returns a balance results in this case there's only one but you'll see how it got split out into its own array here and the library will handle that for you with things like transaction search or anything where multiple items can come back in a single result. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, again, all you'll do is load up whatever template file for whichever call you're wanting to use. They're all pretty much exactly the same. Um, fill in your request parameters and process the result data.